Hey guys and welcome back to episode 14 of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Today I'd like to get some blood magic automation. I did between episodes go ahead and upgrade to tier 4. Just using blank slates at the moment. This also requires the bloodstone tiles which we got from the weak blood shard from the bound blade we made the last time. So this is something I'm going to set up today as, as a ritual for automating LP. Also between episodes, I set up some more seeds in our biogenic insulators. So I changed out the layout here just to add some more. I think this is all we're actually going to need this, in terms of space for tiers 1 to 5 that can be grown in these insulators. I also added a thaumium essence, a platinum essence, flux, and I believe that's it for this drawer wall at the moment. I also upgraded this inferium. To tier 4 seed. Yeah, tier 4 seed. And then around here I have some cloches for the tier 6 seeds. So I I just went ahead and made the nether star uh, seed, which um, was made in the iridescent altar that we got last time. And in order for the seed to grow, you have to have this nether star crux, which isn't too bad to craft, but it means that it can't be made in these insulators here. So I made a separate area here for all the tier 6 seeds. And I think there's nine in total, so we have nine cloches available for when we eventually get all the seeds. Unlike the other tier of seeds, the tier five and below, these can just be made in a regular crafting table. However, the tier six seed needs to be made in a carpenter, which requires sewage and a bit of insanium as well. So we have the insanium auto crafting that we set up last time. Although in order to get the sewage, you need to have a animal sewer. And just have some farm animals above that so i just put one right here and that's just connected to an ender tank and the ender tank connects just in this hallway here next to all the other carpenters so we have now tier six, six seeds on auto craft or at least the crafting seeds anyway there's still a couple more we need to make but we can't do that at the moment anyways on to what we're doing today and that is blood magic so i want to set up a ritual so for that we're going to need a Ritual Diviner, is that what it's called? Yep. Uh, an Activation Crystal, a Master Ritual Stone, and 36 Ritual Stones. So these are all pretty basic crafts. All of these inscription tools just require a thousand essence and some vanilla block. It's, it's really easy to craft. These Ritual Stones out here all cost Reinforced Slates, which is the Tier 2 ones. A bit of Salus Mundus and obsidian so that's really not too bad and the master one just requires four ritual stones so i think in total it's 40 ritual stones for this so i was wondering why the ritual wouldn't show up here and i remembered we need a dusk ritual diviner which is the upgraded version and in order to get this we're going to need uh demonic slates which is a tier four the tier four slate which is imbued reinforced blank slate so i'm just going to farm enough of those to upgrade this diviner and then We'll come back and start the ritual. Alright, I farmed up the slates for the to upgrade the diviner. So I think this should be the last one, yep. So now we can start to build our ritual here. So the one we're looking for is the Well of Suffering here. Alright, so we're going to build it above our blood altar here. I think three blocks up. Then place the master ritual stone. Hold right click. So the ritual is built, we just have to activate it and that's where we need this weak activation crystal. However, if we try and do this, uh, I think you have to right click here, yeah. It says we're too weak, which means we don't have enough LP in our, uh, in our LP network. So we have to take one of our blood orbs, I'll take the magician, and we have to put it inside the altar. And if we take our sigil, we can see how much LP we have. Right now we're at 14,000 and I believe it's 50,000 to activate this. So in order to get more I just have to stand here and sacrifice and I'll be back in a sec. Alright so our essence is currently at 50,000 and we are ready to activate this ritual. So I've built a, a cage around here for the villagers and a bit of mob duplicator in here with the imprisonment tool. I stuck our ender tank here for essence, which it needs to spawn the villagers. And then below it I have this environmental controller given regen 3. So when this well damages the villagers to put essence in our network, the 
controller here will regen them and keep them alive and it's just a constant cycle and giving us infinite LP. Now when we right click the master stone here we should be able to begin the ritual. So let's just try it. Alright so they're taking damage. Let me turn this down actually this is going to be... I'll eventually put a sound muffler on this so we don't have to listen to them. But it looks like they're staying at full HP as you can see because the regen is stronger than the damage from the ritual. And are we getting essence? Or life essence I mean? Yes we are. So our current LP is going up. Now that we have automated LP we can now easily upgrade our altar um, slates from blank to some of the other ones that give like for example capacity that raises the max it raises the max blood that you can have in your altar so right now we're capped at 18,000 because I have these four capacity runes here but we can add more through capacity we can have sacrifice runes which give you more LP per tick you can have speed runes which speed up the crafting as well so I think I'm just going to farm up a bunch of runes and I'll upgrade the altar to the final tier 5 which requires the, I think it's beacons for this as well. And then after that we're going to have to somehow decorate this because, I mean this sticks out like a sore thumb in this base. So, same with these lore miners actually, I, I think I might cover them up and maybe put like cool towers around them. But yeah, like that, those brine towers, like the water pumps that need covered. The mana I think is just going to stay outside like that, but this is just a big eyesore, especially in this theme of base so <laughs> I'm gonna need to do something about that. Anyways I'm gonna just farm up here, upgrade our altar and then I'll show you what we got after that. Alright all the runes are now swapped out here. I have the sacrifice runes which increase the amount of LP per, I don't know if it's per tick, but I think it, it must be per tick of damage and also speed runes which help uh, speed the crafting up here. It's effectively like a time in a bottle for uh, these runes here. And the altar is now a tier 5, so if we take a look at the div divination sigil it'll say at the top left, uh, current tier is tier 5. Now that the blood altars all set up for auto crafting, I will probably between episodes um, build up around it. I'm, th I'm thinking just to make a really big tower here. I think that will fit like in this sort of area since we do have kind of lower buildings here. Like these will all be kind of lower and then it'll be a contrast to the taller structure. I don't know how far up I'll make it but I definitely want to encase this somehow and then have some sort of walkway so that's probably something I'll do uh, between. But for now I want to continue working on Draconic Evolution. So the next step is this Wyvern core. So for the cores they take three Draconic cores which we now have on Autocraft so these are out of the way. Nether Stars we are now growing as we have the seeds. Pladium we've been getting this from the Void Ore Miners uh, from tier 3 and above so we have tons and tons of this. So that's all of these materials out of the way. The Shulker shells. I have Shulkers in this mob duplicator here. And they will um, just provide shulker shells basically for free. So the last two steps is primal mana and ludicrate. So the ludicrate has to be made in the carpenter. We can use a basic one but I don't think this will be fast enough for what we need. So I want to set up the advanced carpenter here. It's going to require liquid DNA, enderium, elementium, blaze mesh, ender amethysts, plutonium and alumite. So out of these materials here we can get Elementium, Blaze Mesh, Plutonium and Enderium, so that just leaves Alumite and Ender Amethysts. The Ender Amethysts we're going to grow, so I'll make the seeds for this. And this Alumite here has to be um, cast from Liquid, and that is an alloy of Aluminium, Iron and Obsidian. So why don't we set up something that gives us Alumite first. Alright, so the way that I tackled this the last time I played the pack was using these seared tanks and alloy tanks from Tinker's Complement. So we can use these to alloy like you can in the furnace from the original Tinker's Construct mod. Although it allows piping in and out and it's it's just generally a lot faster. So we can pipe in the molten versions of obsidian, iron and aluminium. 
and I think I'll use melters from nuclear craft for that since these can be upgraded so I think we'll set it up below the ender IO things here and I'm gonna move this combination crafting later on uh, because we're gonna need a few of these setups mainly for Mirion which is a much more involved process that's quite a few liquids so I think this will give us enough space to set those up but let's just start with the alumite just now so we have a connection here for our AE system so I think we'll leverage that and input the items to the melters from that I think we'll have three melters here we have an interface here providing obsidian, iron and aluminium and then we item conduit this with filters we could alternatively use separate interfaces but that uses more channels so this just condenses it we'll grab a flux point to power this here as well we can just put this down here for the moment and then run ender conduits up to all of these they should now be getting all their items yep so we just configure this and we now have liquids in all of these so now we need to pipe them into this alloy tank if we just put this here we'll need some way of fueling this as well i don't know if i'm going to use lava or something else i'm not maybe maybe liquid starlight actually works i'm not too sure maybe i have to test that but that could be a good, cool option anyways if we just output from all these all right so we actually have to have these tanks next to the the alloy tank here we can't pump directly into this like i thought we could this makes it slightly more ugly but it works so this is the way it's going to stay anyways we need, now need to get the alumite back into or out of this tank and then into some sort of storage so that we can recall it later on in the carpenter for the crafts so or actually no there's no reason to keep it as fluid so we're going to keep it all in ingot form so i'll set up an ingot former for this all right so the ingot former is now placed we're producing alumite I now just need to think of some way that we want to shut this off and there's a few ways that we can do this we can either have some sort of level limiter which level limits the alumite or we can stop the inputs here i think probably the better solution is to stop the alumite at a certain threshold so we can easily just set that up underneath here so if we have i think something like this should work so if we just take alumite here and say if we have less than 300 alumite and then if we enable this to active with signal there we go so this should this should stop um the alumite production when we have less than 300 and let's just sanity check this so if we say less than 50 if we just change this right now to 50 it should stop so these sh yeah so they, they're now being backed up in here, which means we won't just burn through all this and fill our ME system with Alumite when we don't need it. So that's the Alumite taken care of for the Ludicrate. Why don't we set up the Ender Seed now? Or the Ender Amethyst Seed, I mean. So that is the Tier 6 Seed, and that is crafted again in the Iridescent Altar. So let me see if we have enough materials for this, and then we'll craft this up. Alright, so I'm just gathering up all the things for the seeds here. And we need four of these blocks of Amethysts. Uh, so I have to make a bunch of these... The, the more difficult recipe way which means I need a lot of this and I realized I don't have all of these set up for the empowerer so I've just been changing a bunch of recipes here as well I also changed the metal press here from a plate to a rod for this alumite plate uh, that's used in our ardite tool rod sorry that's used in the empowered restonia so I just have to add a bunch of these filters on here to make sure the center item doesn't get blocked or anything and eventually I probably will move this to combination crafting to speed it up because this is really slow but it's going to be easy it's just taking the filters from here and moving over all right I'm just crafting up the last of the lenses I'm just going to batch craft a bunch of these just because they're needed in some of the extra seeds and the mana spreaders things like that and so I also automated all of these empowered recipes finally in the empowerer but it's super slow. I'm going to need to upgrade to the combination crafting because, yeah, I've got a while to wait here just for these blocks of amethysts, which I need to craft a seed. I need four in total, and I have the one just now. So it says a minute and 21. That's It's going to take way longer than a minute and 21 to craft all these blocks. Anyways, I'll be back when we have the seed. 
Alright, crafting is done. Let's make this tier 6 seed. So we just need a nether star here on the relay. There we go. Ender amethyst seeds. I'll also remember to remove this really slow recipe and convert it to the one with the seeds as well. So we never have to make it like this again. This is also one of the tier 6 seeds that doesn't need a crux underneath so we can grow it in the isolators here. And there we go, there's our first essence. Add that to the drawer and we should now see it in our ME system. Yep. Alright, so for this liquid DNA we're going to need a DNA extractor and a forestry sapling. And I have a couple here that I have, I must have got at the beginning of the game. But I'm going to need to farm this up. I was just testing here if we could use these specifically. Otherwise we would need to get into bees and things like that. And the analyzer and honey. And then, yeah, I realized we can use these forestry saplings. So I'm going to use these. Probably switch out my tree farm because I have enough wood as is. So I think I'll just swap these dark oaks over to this teak. And then we can use these for the DNA. Alright, I swapped the tree farm. Uh, it's going to take a little bit for it to make a surplus to get all the saplings it requires. But then we'll set up the DNA extractor here to automatically get labware. And then produce DNA and then I'll put it into an ender tank, I think. I don't know if I've shown this before, but I always keep a some sort of notebook um, with the ender tank colours and also the ender chest colours. It's an easy way to stop uh, contaminating systems with different colour ender tanks and chests. Alright, so let me show you what I've got set up here for DNA. So we have a, um, an export bus exporting the saplings into the extractor. And then we have a crafter here crafting labware. And that's just being fed into the DNA extractor via item conduit here. And once this process is into DNA, it goes into this ender tank. And then I have the first carpenter just tucked away in the corner here. I'm not sure if this is really going to be the best place for it, but it's here for now. Um, so I'll show you around here in the inputs. So for the inputs, we have our pattern here uh, for ludicrate blocks. Uh, the ender tank with DNA is, is connected right here. And then that just goes into the fluid hatch energy and then the output is just on the import bus here. So I haven't actually tried this recipe but in theory everything should be there and it should work. So if I order a ludicrate block now, it should now be crafted after after it crafts the palace. Alright looks like the crafting task completed and we got our ludicrate block and then these can just be shapeless crafted into ingots. And that's the ludicrate taken care of. So the last step to the wyvern core is primal mana. Before I tackle primal mana though I'm going to set up a second carp advanced carpenter for the wyvern course so I should have everything I need here. I'm just going to set it up next to the alumite here I think. Alright the second carpenter is now built. Time to just hook it up now. So we can just use a ME interface, same as before for the item input. For energy, we can just put a point straight on the back. And fluid input we can handle later on. As for the item output, we can either export bus or we can just pipe into an interface. So yeah, now that all that's missing is this primal mana. So for that we need IC2 coolant, Osgo glass and Mirion. However I just checked the time for this episode and I think we're running a bit long here so I'm going to cut it here and then we'll tackle this primal mana next time. We got the blood altar situated today which is really nice and we also made a start on the wyvern cores and crafted up a few tier 6 seeds but yeah. Um, next time we'll finish off the wyvern cores and then I think we'll tackle fusion crafting. So thanks again for watching and see you next time.